we really not like how it complements um, teaching. Of course, it doesn't replace teaching, but it complements it so nicely because it is so chunked and, um, you know, this bite-sized learning works really well for our students. What we've seen, I suppose, a big change this year is that primary has really got very engaged from year three onwards um, and have answered so many questions and, and it works throughout the age range uh, because of the artificial intelligence behind it. Um, and again, just, just showing you a, a little example here, how easy it is to use. And what I've liked about Century is that, you know, things have progressed a lot and, and you know, they, they did listen to feedback quite a bit in the beginning, students found it difficult to only be able to ask for a few answers and a bit of feedback. And then that changed quite rapidly throughout the time and, and students and parents uh, do really like it. Um, I really like uh, the dashboard personally, because this is the way in which we sold it to parents. Um, as we all know, um, teenagers aren't the easiest to talk to about, well, about anything probably, but uh, about their education. They come home, how is your learning today? Oh, fine. And then that will be it. But this is, such an easy way to start a conversation with your child. And, and that's what I said to parents. I said, look, all they've got to do is to go to their dashboard and just ask them a little bit about why um, you know, they feel that, that they're, they're doing so well with finding decimal percentages, for example. And I haven't uh, put the whole picture on here, but um, there is a focus on to improve. There is a stretch myself as well. We talked a little bit before about you know, stretching the most stable there. So all of that is there. Um, for parents to start a great conversation uh, with, with their children. And, and that really helped, especially over that Easter holiday where parents weren't quite sure what to do with their children uh, for all that time. Um, for the teacher, I mean, this shows you just how easy, again, it is to use it. And, and we talked about training. I don't think there's a need for a huge amount of training. Uh, once you see this, you can tell that your class is doing absolutely fine with missing numbers and doesn't need any work on this in the classroom, but some are still struggling with, with, with number lines and you might want to just address that in the classroom. So this is how we sold it to teachers saying, you know, it just helps you um, on the one hand have better information about your class, but also, and, and James talked about well-being before, also reduces your workload in terms of marking. This, this amount of detail, especially in English, is very difficult to get by um, in, in secondary um, because of the literature, well, I, I know I don't need to tell you this, but because of the literature aspect of things uh, and the different types of marking, it becomes sometimes difficult for the teachers to focus on the apostrophes and the little things that in our school, especially here in Madrid, is, is very important. Our, the majority of our students are Spanish speaking at home and this is and are learning in their second language. Um, and, and this is, uh, you know, the data, and this is great to see sort of where are the, the peaks and troughs and, and when our students, well, you can see when our half terms are, for example, <laughs> since September, but you can see there uh, right at the beginning, we had a real peak there, uh, and, and that worked really well to generate that data. And we can sort of see when our students are working well, but it goes into so much detail uh, once you drill down, which is very useful. Um, so where are we now in, in May? Uh, 20, 2021. Um, so we've really moved forward. And for example, I, I monitor, it, it really doesn't take me much time, what the students are doing. And we have a daily reward system where each of the subjects uh, is um, highlighted one day of the week. And the top three uh, for the week will be featured in there. We have something called the, the secondary daily briefing. So all students will see that uh, every morning uh, in tutor time. And I will also send weekly messages home for those students who have been at the top and it's only for a week and I keep telling the students look it's not because you didn't do so much work the week before you still got a chance to be that student in there and both parents and students really appreciate um, have seen their names and getting the messages home but I think for us as a um, school which does um, accept students from slightly different uh, curriculums before so you know they might join GCSE not have done key stage three or might join A level not having done IGCSEs. Uh, for our new joiners, this has been really invaluable. Uh, we are now able to say, well, you know, we think there's a few gaps in, in your learning perhaps, and we can assign them bits of the curriculum we would like them to work on. And we can actually make that one of the conditions of, of joining saying, well, you will need to do this. Um, we can very easily put them in a separate class in the monitoring uh, side of things, and then we can see whether they are actually uh, engaging with that and whether they need any reminders of, of how, how much engagement we are expecting. And then also we use this for various intervention groups and, and that's been really powerful. 
in, in terms of um, easy monitoring and setting aside little groups of students. Obviously, the student is not aware that they're in a slightly different group, but our support department are able to push nuggets forward that they find more appropriate for those particular students. Our coordinators might look at our more, more talented students, push some nuggets towards them as well. And the students won't know any difference. They, they don't know which class they're in or, or which group they've been in. 